I always jokingly say if every farm had a field border, I wouldn't have a job. <laughs> I'm Dennis Ireland, live in Pierce County, and uh, I belong to the Kinney River Land Watershed Group, and that's where we connected with a plan for a buffer. What it started out with, this is all trees and lots of rocks, rocks that got pushed out of the field. Started out with clearing the brush, and then we cut off a lot of trees, uh, dug the stumps out, then piled up the logs, hauled some of the logs home, then finished leveling, and then started planting seeds and soil conservation mix and you know grasses for that. When it rains, the water comes out of here in a sheet instead of a channel, and that causes more erosion. That I'm excited about because now we keep we've maintained this, and they'll get better production out of those out of this field because of the fact that. The tree lines push so far back. The first thing was to talk to NRCS and get a plan. That was excellent because then I knew, it gave me a good scope of what, what the project should look like after I'm done. And as long as you've got that in your mind, then things kind of follow through. So get some advice, get a good professional look at it. Well, erosion, that's the big one. And the fact that um, those trees are f affecting the production for that crop field, those are two big warning signs. If, you, if you're planting right up to the tree line, then you're losing. It all made sense. And I've done waterways here as well, and for the same reason, it's conservation. Well, my name is Dan Sitz. I work for Pierce County Land Conservation Department and we offer technical and financial assistance to farmers and landowners. Several years ago, Dennis had contacted me with some concerns on his property, and one of them was some erosion that was occurring along the edge of the field here. And it probably goes back to before Dennis bought the property, but it's a classic problem I see is basically channelized gull erosion on the headland of a field. And that gully became so bad that you couldn't cross it with equipment. And that's another cost of erosion I like to remind operators because it's easy to ignore it and actually go around it, but it's just going to keep getting bigger. At some point, it's going to cost even more to fix. Dennis decided to do a lot of the work himself, but he basically involved clearing some of the trees that were hanging over the fence line and leveling the ground and then seeding it. Moving forward, a lot, you know, a lot of these field borders, we just want to make sure they get maintained either by mowing once a year or a lot of operators just make hay off of them. Um, but they just uh, provide a, a really good field border and I always jokingly say if every farm had a field border I wouldn't have a job. Usually a lot of the big major erosion I see starts right at the edge of the field because usually they crop until it starts getting steep and then it, that's where the water runs off the field and there's no sod or grass because it's shaded by the trees and then a gully forms. And the first thing I have a conversation about is the economics of farming within 20 or 30 feet of a tree line. You have to identify the parts of your field that are the least profitable and take them out of production and that's usually 30 feet next to the woods. And by maintaining a field border, uh, I've had a lot of landowners come in, they say, that was a great idea, I love it, because they can access around their farm better, they, have, they see a lot more wildlife, um, and they know they're not wasting money on inputs right next to the trees. There's a lot of different resources out there. Um, I'm with Pierce County, but we use the same standards as NRCS, so this project met the NRCS field border standard and um, but otherwise they could contact local farm led watershed councils and ask for help. If there had not been a gully here and we didn't have that channelized flowing it would have been just a matter of measuring out the field border that works for the size of equipment the operator has to turn around on and seeding it down. Um, there's a lot of different seed mixes that, that we can use and recommend based on soil types or what they're planning on doing with it. Um, so in a situation like that, it's really cheap and easy to do. 
This situation was more complicated because we needed excavating equipment to smooth it out first. If another farmer was hesitant about establishing a field border, I would quickly invite them out to another farm that we've worked with and have them meet the farmer and see that field border and, uh, and hear it from another farmer of, of the benefits that they see from having a field border.